Welcome to our channel. Here, we explore the fascinating journey of human evolution, ancient civilizations, and groundbreaking discoveries about our ancestors. From Homo erectus to Homo sapiens, we delve into the origins of humankind, offering deep insights and engaging content to fuel your curiosity. Let's embark on this evolutionary expedition together. Part 1 – Introduction to Homo erectus Homo erectus is one of the most important figures in the story of human evolution. Their emergence marks a significant leap from earlier hominins, setting the stage for future evolutionary developments. Known for their upright posture, Homo erectus appeared around 1.9 million years ago and persisted until approximately 110,000 years ago, making them one of the longest-lasting hominin species in evolutionary history. Their presence in the fossil record is wide-ranging, with remains found in Africa, Asia, and Europe, underscoring their ability to adapt and thrive in diverse environments. The name, Homo erectus, which translates to, upright man, highlights their distinguishing feature, bipedalism, or walking on two legs. While earlier hominins like Australopithecus had already adopted bipedal locomotion, Homo erectus perfected it, displaying a more advanced form of upright walking that allowed them to cover long distances efficiently. Their physical evolution reflects an adaptation to changing environments, particularly the spread of open grasslands in Africa. Homo erectus is often considered the first true, global, species due to their wide geographic distribution. Fossils attributed to Homo erectus have been discovered as far east as China and Indonesia, as well as in Europe and the Middle East, suggesting that they were among the first hominins to leave Africa. This migration not only signals their adaptability but also hints at cognitive and technological advancements that allowed them to explore and settle in varied landscapes. The story of Homo erectus is, therefore, not just one of biological evolution but also cultural and technological development, laying the groundwork for the species that would follow. The evolutionary significance of Homo erectus cannot be overstated. They represent a clear shift from earlier hominins who were largely dependent on their immediate environment. Homo erectus, in contrast, demonstrated an ability to manipulate and control their surroundings through toolmaking, the use of fire, and perhaps even social organization. Their emergence signifies the dawn of a new era in human evolution, one characterized by innovation, adaptation, and resilience in the face of changing climatic and environmental conditions. The physical characteristics of Homo erectus, particularly their larger brain size, set them apart from earlier hominins. With a cranial capacity ranging from 600 to 1,100 cubic centimeters, Homo erectus showed a marked increase in brain size compared to species like Homo habilis. This increase in brain size is often associated with more complex behaviors, including toolmaking and possibly early forms of communication. While their brain was still smaller than that of modern humans, the growth in cranial capacity suggests that Homo erectus was capable of more advanced cognitive functions than their predecessors. This introductory part lays the groundwork for understanding the significance of Homo erectus in the broader evolutionary narrative. As the first hominin to exhibit a suite of traits that would later be perfected by Homo sapiens, Homo erectus represents a critical link in the chain of human evolution. Their ability to adapt to different environments, innovate with tools, and possibly communicate rudimentarily underscores their importance in the evolutionary timeline. In the subsequent parts, we will explore their migration patterns, physical characteristics, social structures, and more, delving deeper into the legacy of this ancient human species. Part 2, The First Migrators Homo erectus holds the distinction of being the first hominin species to migrate out of Africa, an achievement that underscores their adaptability and technological prowess. This migration, which occurred over hundreds of thousands of years, took Homo erectus from the plains of Africa to the forests and coastal regions of Asia and Europe. The fossil evidence for this migration is widespread, with significant discoveries in Manasai, Georgia, and Java, Indonesia, providing a glimpse into the far-reaching presence of this species. One of the earliest pieces of evidence for Homo erectus migration comes from the Manasai site in Georgia, where fossils dating to around 1.8 million years ago were uncovered. 
These fossils are among the earliest known remains of Homo erectus outside Africa, and they reveal much about the species' adaptability. The Dmanasai individuals had smaller brains and more primitive tools than their later counterparts, suggesting that Homo erectus migration was not driven by a sudden technological leap but rather by a gradual expansion in response to environmental changes. In Southeast Asia, the discovery of Homo erectus fossils in Java, Indonesia, provides further evidence of their wide geographic range. The Java fossils, which are some of the oldest Homo erectus remains in the region, date back to around 1.5 million years ago. These individuals were likely adapted to a tropical climate, showcasing the species' ability to thrive in different environments. The presence of Homo erectus in such diverse regions indicates that they were capable of surviving in varied ecosystems, from the open grasslands of Africa to the dense forests of Southeast Asia. The migration of Homo erectus was not a single, coordinated event but rather a series of gradual movements over time. As the climate shifted and new opportunities for food and shelter arose, groups of Homo erectus likely followed animal migrations and sought out new resources in distant lands. Their movement was facilitated by their ability to walk long distances efficiently, a trait that set them apart from earlier hominins. Their skeletal structure, particularly their long legs and shorter arms, was perfectly suited for endurance walking, enabling them to cover vast distances in search of new habitats. The ability to migrate over such long distances raises questions about the cognitive abilities of Homo erectus. While they likely did not possess the sophisticated language and social structures of modern humans, their ability to adapt to new environments suggests a level of intelligence and problem-solving previously unseen in earlier hominins. Tools, which will be explored in greater detail later, likely played a crucial role in their ability to survive in different climates and landscapes. Homo erectus migration out of Africa also had a profound impact on the evolutionary history of other hominin species. By spreading across different regions, Homo erectus may have come into contact with other hominin populations, leading to potential gene flow and the sharing of cultural practices. The presence of Homo erectus in Europe, for example, may have influenced the development of later species such as Homo heidelbergensis and Neanderthals. In summary, Homo erectus migration out of Africa represents one of the most significant events in human evolution. Their ability to adapt to new environments, coupled with their technological innovations, allowed them to spread across vast regions of the old world. This part of the story highlights the adaptability and resilience of Homo erectus, setting the stage for further exploration of their technological advancements and social structures. Part 3. Physical Characteristics The physical characteristics of Homo erectus are one of the defining features that distinguish them from earlier hominins. Their skeletal structure, cranial capacity, and other anatomical traits reveal much about their adaptation to different environments and their evolutionary significance. Homo erectus was a robust species, with a body built for endurance walking and survival in challenging environments. One of the most noticeable features of Homo erectus is their cranial structure. The skull of Homo erectus is characterized by a pronounced brow ridge, or supraorbital torus, which gives them a distinctive appearance. This brow ridge likely served as a structural reinforcement for the skull, allowing it to withstand the stresses of chewing tougher food. Additionally, the Homo erectus skull had a low, elongated shape with a sloping forehead, indicating that while their brain size had increased compared to earlier hominins, it was still smaller than that of modern humans. Despite the smaller brain size, Homo erectus showed a marked increase in cranial capacity compared to their predecessors. The average brain size of Homo erectus ranged from 600 to 1,100 cubic centimeters, a significant leap from the 500 to 700 cubic centimeters of Homo habilis. This increase in brain size is often associated with more complex behaviors, such as toolmaking and social organization. However, the larger brain did not necessarily mean that Homo erectus had the same cognitive abilities as modern humans, as the shape and organization of their brain were different. The body structure of Homo erectus was well suited for bipedal locomotion. Their long legs and shorter arms, combined with a narrow pelvis, 
made them efficient walkers, capable of covering long distances with minimal energy expenditure. This adaptation was crucial for a species that migrated across vast regions, as it allowed them to follow animal migrations and explore new environments. Their endurance walking ability also suggests that Homo erectus was likely a skilled hunter, able to track prey over long distances. In addition to their adaptations for walking, Homo erectus had other physical traits that reflect their ability to survive in different environments. Their robust bones and strong muscles indicate that they were physically capable of handling the challenges of their surroundings. Whether it was hunting large game or defending themselves from predators, Homo erectus was well equipped for survival. One of the most intriguing aspects of Homo erectus physical characteristics is the variation found in their fossils. The wide geographic range of Homo erectus means that there was likely regional variation in their physical traits, with some populations developing unique adaptations to their specific environments. For example, Homo erectus fossils from Africa tend to be more robust and larger in size compared to those found in Asia, reflecting the different ecological pressures in each region. The physical characteristics of Homo erectus also raise questions about their cognitive abilities. While their brain size was larger than that of earlier hominins, the shape of their brain suggests that they may have had different cognitive functions compared to modern humans. For example, the frontal lobe, which is associated with higher cognitive functions like problem-solving and planning, was less developed in Homo erectus. This suggests that while they were capable of more complex behaviors than earlier species, they may not have had the same level of abstract thinking as Homo sapiens. In conclusion, the physical characteristics of Homo erectus provide valuable insights into their adaptability and evolutionary significance. Their robust skeletal structure, larger brain size, and efficient bipedalism allowed them to thrive in diverse environments and set the stage for future hominin species. In the next part, we will explore the technological innovations of Homo erectus, focusing on their use of tools and the role these played in their survival. Part 4, The Use of Tools The technological prowess of Homo erectus represents a significant leap forward in human evolution. One of their most remarkable achievements was the development and use of tools, which became central to their survival strategy. Unlike earlier hominins who used simple stone tools, Homo erectus is most famously associated with the Acheulean tool culture, characterized by more advanced and specialized stone tools, such as hand axes. These tools not only demonstrate an increase in cognitive ability but also suggest that Homo erectus had developed a more systematic approach to toolmaking, one that reflected foresight and planning. The Acheulean hand axe is perhaps the most iconic tool associated with Homo erectus. Found across Africa, Europe, and parts of Asia, these bifacially flaked tools were used for a variety of tasks, including cutting meat, processing plant materials, and possibly even for defense. The symmetrical shape of these hand axes indicates a level of skill and understanding of stone flaking that was far beyond what earlier hominins could achieve. Unlike the Olduin tools used by Homo habilis, which were primarily crude flakes, the Acheulean tools show a deliberate effort to create more standardized and effective implements. The process of making Acheulean tools required Homo erectus to strike a large stone with another to produce sharp edges, a method known as napping. This process was labor-intensive and required a keen understanding of materials, as different stones had varying levels of durability and workability. Homo erectus likely experimented with different types of rock, such as flint, quartzite, and basalt, to find the most suitable material for toolmaking. The ability to produce such tools consistently suggests that Homo erectus had not only improved their motor skills but also developed a better grasp of abstract concepts like symmetry and function. Beyond the hand axe, Homo erectus also made other types of tools. They crafted cleavers, which had a broad, flat edge used for chopping, and picks, which were employed for digging. These tools were versatile and reflected the diverse environments that Homo erectus inhabited. In Africa, they may have used their tools for hunting and butchering large game, while in Asia, they could have been used to process different types of vegetation. 
The range of tools used by Homo erectus demonstrates their ability to adapt to various ecological niches, showcasing their technological flexibility. The use of tools by Homo erectus also played a critical role in their diet and subsistence strategies. While they were likely still scavenging some of their food, Homo erectus was also capable of hunting, and their tools helped them to butcher animals more efficiently. This shift toward a more meat-based diet may have been a driving force behind the increase in brain size seen in Homo erectus, as the nutrients from animal proteins and fats would have supported greater cognitive development. The ability to process food more effectively also reduced the physical demands of chewing tough, raw food, further shaping the evolution of their facial structure and teeth. The technological innovations of Homo erectus extended beyond stone tools. There is evidence to suggest that they also used wooden tools, though these have not survived in the fossil record as well as stone implements. Some researchers believe that Homo erectus may have used wooden spears for hunting, based on the discovery of well-preserved wooden spears at later archaeological sites associated with other hominin species. This would indicate that Homo erectus was capable of more sophisticated hunting techniques than previously thought. In addition to tool use, Homo erectus may have also engaged in tool sharing and learning within their social groups. The standardization of Acheulean tools across different regions suggests that knowledge of toolmaking was passed down from one generation to the next, indicating a form of cultural transmission. This points to the possibility that Homo erectus had developed some form of rudimentary social structure in which members of the group shared skills and cooperated in survival tasks. The toolmaking abilities of Homo erectus represent a turning point in the story of human evolution. Their technological advancements not only allowed them to better exploit their environment but also laid the foundation for future developments in tool technology by later species such as Homo heidelbergensis and Homo sapiens. The Acheulean hand axe and other tools were not just practical implements but also symbols of the cognitive and cultural evolution of early humans. In the next part, we will explore the discovery and use of fire by Homo erectus and how it further revolutionized their way of life. Part 5, The Role of Fire Perhaps the most transformative technological achievement of Homo erectus was the controlled use of fire. The mastery of fire was a revolutionary development in human evolution, fundamentally altering how Homo erectus interacted with their environment, obtained food, and protected themselves. While evidence of fire use by Homo erectus is still debated among researchers, several archaeological sites suggest that they were among the first hominins to harness this powerful natural force. The earliest evidence of controlled fire use by Homo erectus comes from sites such as Wonderwork Cave in South Africa, where burned animal bones and charred plant materials have been found, dating to approximately one million years ago. These findings suggest that Homo erectus was using fire to cook food, a significant development that would have had profound implications for their diet and nutrition. Cooking food not only made it easier to chew and digest but also unlocked more calories and nutrients, which in turn may have contributed to the increase in brain size observed in Homo erectus. The use of fire would have also provided Homo erectus with protection from predators, particularly at night. In open environments like the African savanna, where large carnivores roamed, fire would have acted as a deterrent, keeping dangerous animals at bay. This ability to control fire allowed Homo erectus to extend their day, giving them more time to engage in activities such as toolmaking, social interaction, and possibly even early forms of communication. In addition to its practical uses, fire likely played a central role in the social lives of Homo erectus. The warmth and light provided by fire would have allowed them to gather together in groups during the evening, fostering social cohesion and potentially facilitating the development of early forms of social structures. The hearth, a communal space where fire was maintained, may have become a focal point for group activities, whether it was sharing food, caring for young, or simply seeking warmth and comfort. The ability to control fire also suggests a higher level of cognitive development in Homo erectus. Fire is not something that can be easily controlled or maintained, it requires attention, skill, and an understanding of how to keep it going. Homo erectus would have needed to learn how to gather and store fuel, such as wood and plant materials, 
and how to ignite a fire, possibly by striking stones together or using friction methods. The fact that they could do this indicates a significant advancement in their problem-solving abilities and their capacity for forward thinking. The mastery of fire also had implications for the migration patterns of Homo erectus. As they moved into colder regions of Europe and Asia, fire would have become an essential tool for survival. In these harsher climates, fire provided warmth, enabling Homo erectus to expand their range into regions that would have otherwise been uninhabitable. This adaptability showcases the versatility of Homo erectus and their ability to use technology to overcome environmental challenges. The evidence for fire use by Homo erectus is still a topic of ongoing research, and not all archaeologists agree on the extent to which they controlled fire. However, the discoveries at sites like Wonderwork Cave and others provide strong support for the idea that Homo erectus was indeed using fire, at least sporadically, and that this use of fire had a profound impact on their development as a species. In summary, the ability to harness fire represents one of the most important technological achievements in the history of human evolution. For Homo erectus, fire provided warmth, protection, and a new way to process food, all of which contributed to their success as a species. In the next part, we will explore the social structures of Homo erectus and how they may have organized themselves to survive and thrive in a challenging world. Part 6, Social Structures. Understanding the social structures of Homo erectus is a complex task, as direct evidence of their social behavior is limited. However, insights can be gleaned from archaeological discoveries, fossil records, and comparisons with later hominin species. While Homo erectus likely did not have the highly organized social structures of modern humans, they were almost certainly more socially complex than their predecessors, and their survival in diverse environments suggests that cooperation and group living played an important role in their lives. One of the key pieces of evidence for social cooperation in Homo erectus comes from the discovery of shared habitation sites. Archaeological sites such as Zucudian in China, where numerous Homo erectus fossils and tools have been found, indicate that they lived in groups, possibly forming small communities. These sites suggest that Homo erectus may have had a form of social organization in which individuals work together to gather food, share resources, and protect each other from predators. The use of communal spaces, such as hearths and toolmaking areas, further supports the idea of group living and cooperation. Homo erectus was likely a nomadic species, moving from one location to another in search of food and resources. This nomadic lifestyle would have required a high degree of cooperation, particularly when it came to hunting large game or scavenging animal carcasses. While it is unlikely that Homo erectus engaged in the highly coordinated hunting strategies seen in later hominins, their use of tools and possible group hunting behaviors suggest that they work together to acquire food. Another piece of evidence for social cooperation comes from the discovery of fossils showing signs of healed injuries and illnesses. For example, at the Dmanisai site in Georgia, a Homo erectus skull was found with evidence of a severe tooth infection, which would have made it difficult for the individual to chew food. Despite this debilitating condition, the individual survived for some time, suggesting that they may have been cared for by other members of their group. This kind of care for the sick or injured is a hallmark of social cooperation and indicates that Homo erectus had developed a level of empathy and social responsibility that was previously unseen in earlier hominins. In terms of family structures, it is difficult to say whether Homo erectus had nuclear families or more fluid social arrangements. However, their need for cooperation in survival tasks likely meant that group bonds were strong, and individuals may have relied on extended networks of kin for support. The presence of multiple individuals at shared habitation sites suggests that Homo erectus lived in groups that included adults and children, though the exact nature of these social bonds remains unclear. The social life of Homo erectus may have also been shaped by the use of fire. As mentioned in the previous part, fire provided a communal space where individuals could gather, share food, and engage in social activities. The presence of a hearth may have fostered group cohesion, as it allowed individuals to come together in the evenings after a day of foraging or hunting. 
This kind of social interaction, even if rudimentary, would have been crucial for building bonds within the group and ensuring the survival of the species. Overall, while the social structures of Homo erectus were likely simpler than those of modern humans, they exhibited clear signs of cooperation, group living, and possibly even empathy. These social behaviors would have been essential for their survival, particularly in the diverse and often challenging environments they inhabited. In the next part, we will delve into the hunting and dietary habits of Homo erectus, exploring how their diet evolved and the role it played in their development as a species. Part 7, Hunting and Diet The hunting and dietary practices of Homo erectus offer fascinating insights into their survival strategies and how they adapted to different environments. Unlike earlier hominins, who likely relied heavily on foraging and scavenging, Homo erectus is believed to have incorporated more active hunting into their subsistence patterns. Their dietary evolution is closely linked to their increased cognitive abilities, physical endurance, and use of tools, all of which contributed to their capacity to exploit a broader range of food resources. One of the key developments that set Homo erectus apart from their predecessors was their ability to process and consume a larger variety of foods, particularly meat. While earlier hominins like Australopithecus and Homo habilis primarily relied on plant-based diets supplemented by scavenged meat, Homo erectus shifted toward a more omnivorous diet that included a higher proportion of animal protein. This dietary shift is thought to have played a significant role in their cognitive development, as meat is a dense source of calories and nutrients that are essential for brain growth. The increase in brain size seen in Homo erectus is often attributed, at least in part, to the adoption of a more meat-rich diet. Hunting, in particular, became a crucial aspect of Homo erectus lifestyle. Although there is some debate over the extent to which they actively hunted versus scavenged, there is evidence to suggest that Homo erectus was capable of hunting medium to large-sized animals. Fossil remains from various sites show cut marks on animal bones that are consistent with the use of stone tools for butchering, indicating that Homo erectus used their Acheulean tools to process meat. These tools would have been particularly useful for stripping meat from bones and breaking open bones to access marrow, a highly nutritious part of an animal's body. The hunting techniques employed by Homo erectus were likely simple but effective. They probably used a combination of ambush hunting, persistence hunting, and opportunistic scavenging. Persistence hunting, in particular, would have taken advantage of Homo erectus physical endurance. With their long legs and efficient bipedal locomotion, Homo erectus could have pursued prey over long distances until the animals were exhausted. This method of hunting, which is still practiced by some modern hunter-gatherer groups, does not require sophisticated weapons but rather relies on the hunter's ability to track and outlast the prey. In addition to hunting, Homo erectus likely continued to forage for plant-based foods. Their diet would have included fruits, tubers, nuts, seeds, and other edible plant materials. The diversity of their diet would have been influenced by the availability of resources in their environment, with those living in tropical regions having access to different plant and animal species compared to those in more temperate or arid regions. This dietary flexibility was one of the key factors that allowed Homo erectus to thrive in a variety of ecosystems, from the savannas of Africa to the forests of Asia. The use of fire by Homo erectus, as discussed in the previous part, also had a profound impact on their diet. Cooking food not only made it easier to chew and digest but also increased the nutritional value of certain foods. For example, cooking meat breaks down tough fibers and makes it easier for the body to extract nutrients, while cooking tubers and other plant foods helps to release starches that are otherwise difficult to digest. This would have given Homo erectus a significant advantage in terms of energy efficiency, allowing them to extract more calories from their food and support the energy demands of their larger brains. The shift toward a more meat-based diet also had implications for the social structures of Homo erectus. Hunting large game likely required some level of cooperation, particularly when it came to sharing the spoils of a successful hunt. While there is limited evidence for the kind of organized hunting strategies seen in later hominins, the fact that Homo erectus lived in groups suggests that they may have shared food and resources with one another. 
This kind of food sharing is a key component of social bonding in many modern human societies, and it is possible that Homo erectus engaged in similar practices. Interestingly, the dental remains of Homo erectus provide further clues about their diet. Unlike earlier hominins, who had larger teeth and more robust jaws suited to processing tough, fibrous plant material, Homo erectus had smaller teeth and less pronounced jaw muscles. This suggests that their diet included softer, more easily digestible foods, possibly as a result of cooking. The reduction in tooth and jaw size is seen as part of the broader trend in human evolution toward smaller, less specialized dentition as our ancestors adopted more sophisticated food processing techniques. The ability of Homo erectus to adapt their diet to different environments was a key factor in their success as a species. In colder regions, they would have relied more heavily on meat, while in tropical areas, they likely consumed a greater variety of plant foods. This dietary flexibility allowed them to survive in diverse habitats, from the grasslands of Africa to the forests of Southeast Asia. In fact, some researchers believe that the success of Homo erectus in migrating out of Africa and colonizing new regions was due in large part to their ability to exploit a wide range of food resources. In addition to their meat-eating habits, Homo erectus may have also consumed a variety of other animal products, such as eggs, insects, and shellfish, depending on what was available in their environment. The ability to gather and process these resources would have further diversified their diet and provided them with essential nutrients, particularly in environments where plant-based foods were scarce. In conclusion, the hunting and dietary practices of Homo erectus played a crucial role in their survival and evolution. Their shift toward a more meat-based diet, combined with their use of tools and fire, allowed them to extract more nutrients from their food and support their growing brains. This dietary flexibility also enabled them to adapt to different environments and expand their range across Africa, Asia, and Europe. The next part will explore the potential for communication and language in Homo erectus, examining whether they had the capacity for early forms of verbal interaction and how this might have influenced their social behavior. Part 8, Communication and Language One of the most intriguing questions surrounding Homo erectus is whether they possessed the ability to communicate through language, or at least some form of rudimentary communication. While there is no direct evidence of language in Homo erectus, their increased brain size, use of tools, and complex social behaviors suggest that they may have had the capacity for more sophisticated forms of communication than their predecessors. The question of whether Homo erectus had language is central to understanding their cognitive abilities and social interactions. The first clue to the possibility of language in Homo erectus lies in their brain size and structure. While their brain was smaller than that of modern humans, it was significantly larger than that of earlier hominins like Australopithecus or Homo habilis. The brain of Homo erectus had a cranial capacity ranging from 600 to 1,100 cubic centimeters, which suggests that they had the neurological potential for more complex thought processes, including communication. The frontal lobe, which is involved in higher cognitive functions such as problem-solving and planning, was more developed in Homo erectus than in earlier species, though still less advanced than in Homo sapiens. Another important area of the brain related to language is Broca's area, which is associated with speech production. While it is difficult to determine the exact structure of Broca's area in Homo erectus, studies of endocasts, the impressions of the brain on the inner surface of the skull, suggest that this region was beginning to show signs of development in Homo erectus. This has led some researchers to hypothesize that Homo erectus may have had the neurological capacity for rudimentary speech or vocalizations. In addition to brain structure, the anatomy of the vocal tract in Homo erectus is another area of interest when exploring the possibility of language. Modern humans have a descended larynx, which allows for a wide range of vocal sounds and is essential for speech. However, Fossil evidence suggests that Homo erectus may not have had the same vocal anatomy as modern humans. Their vocal tract was likely more similar to that of non-human primates, which would have limited their ability to produce the full range of sounds necessary for complex speech. That said, 
they may have been capable of producing a variety of vocalizations, such as grunts, calls, or even proto-words, which could have been used for basic communication within their social groups. The use of tools by Homo erectus also suggests that they had the cognitive capacity for communication. The production of Acheulean tools required a level of planning, precision, and the ability to pass on knowledge to others. It is likely that Homo erectus communicated with one another in some way to teach toolmaking techniques, whether through gestures, vocalizations, or a combination of both. The fact that Acheulean tools show a high degree of standardization across different regions implies that knowledge of toolmaking was shared and passed down through generations, which would have required some form of communication. Social interaction among Homo erectus may have further driven the development of communication. As discussed in previous parts, Homo erectus likely lived in small groups and engaged in cooperative behaviors such as hunting and food sharing. These social activities would have required a means of coordinating actions, whether through gestures, vocal signals, or proto-language. While it is unlikely that Homo erectus had the fully developed language of modern humans, their social structure suggests that they had some form of communicative system that allowed them to work together and maintain social bonds. In summary, while the exact nature of communication in Homo erectus remains speculative, there is evidence to suggest that they may have had the neurological and anatomical capacity for rudimentary forms of speech or vocalization. Their use of tools, social behaviors, and brain development all point to the possibility that Homo erectus was on the path toward more complex communication, setting the stage for the eventual development of language in later hominin species. In the next part, we will examine the habitation and shelter building practices of Homo erectus, exploring how they adapted to different environments and constructed shelters for protection and survival. Part 9, Habitation and Shelter. Homo erectus was a highly adaptable species that lived in diverse environments, ranging from the savannas of Africa to the forests and coastal regions of Asia and Europe. This adaptability is evident in their ability to construct and utilize a variety of shelters to protect themselves from the elements, predators, and other environmental challenges. While the archaeological record provides limited direct evidence of the specific structures built by Homo erectus, there is enough to suggest that they were capable of constructing rudimentary shelters, taking refuge in caves, and modifying their surroundings to suit their needs. The use of natural shelters, such as caves and rock overhangs, likely played a significant role in the survival of Homo erectus, especially in regions where such formations were abundant. Caves offered protection from predators and the elements, particularly in colder climates where exposure to the wind, rain, and cold could be deadly. Several archaeological sites provide evidence of Homo erectus inhabiting caves. One of the most famous examples is the Zucudian site in China, where fossils and stone tools associated with Homo erectus have been found in a cave system. This site, which dates to around 750,000 to 400,000 years ago, provides a glimpse into the daily lives of Homo erectus and their use of natural shelters. At Tsukudian, Homo erectus likely used the cave as a base for a variety of activities, including toolmaking, cooking, and possibly even socializing. The remains of animal bones at the site suggest that they butchered and processed animals inside the cave, using it as a secure location to carry out these tasks. Additionally, there is evidence of fire use at Tsukudian, indicating that Homo erectus may have built hearths inside the cave to cook food, provide warmth, and protect themselves from predators. The cave would have served as a communal space where members of the group could gather, rest, and share resources, highlighting the importance of shelter in their survival. In regions where natural shelters like caves were not available, Homo erectus likely constructed simple shelters using materials from their environment. While there is limited direct evidence of such structures, some archaeological sites suggest that Homo erectus may have built huts or lean-tos from branches, leaves, and other organic materials. These shelters would have provided protection from the elements and could have been easily assembled and disassembled as groups moved from one location to another. One example of a possible shelter-building site is the Terra Amida site in France, which dates to around 400,000 years ago. Although this site is associated with later hominin species, 
the evidence suggests that earlier populations, potentially including Homo erectus, may have built simple shelters on the beach using wooden poles and brush. The site includes post holes, which indicate the presence of wooden structures, and stone tools scattered throughout the area suggest that these shelters were used as temporary campsites. While the Terra Amida site may not be definitively linked to Homo erectus, it provides a model for how they might have constructed temporary shelters in regions where caves and other natural shelters were not available. Homo erectus' ability to build and utilize shelters was likely influenced by their migratory lifestyle. As they moved across different regions in search of food and resources, they would have needed to adapt to a wide range of environmental conditions. In colder climates, such as those in northern Europe and parts of Asia, shelters would have been essential for survival during the harsh winters. The use of fire in these shelters would have provided additional warmth and comfort, enabling Homo erectus to extend their range into regions that were previously uninhabitable for earlier hominins. The construction of shelters also suggests that Homo erectus had a deeper understanding of their environment and the materials available to them. Building a shelter, even a simple one, requires planning, foresight, and the ability to select and manipulate materials. This is another indication of the cognitive advancements that Homo erectus had made compared to their predecessors. The ability to create a more controlled environment through shelter construction reflects their growing mastery over their surroundings, a theme that runs throughout the story of Homo erectus evolution. Shelter building would have also played a role in the social dynamics of Homo erectus. Constructing a shelter is often a communal activity, requiring cooperation and coordination among group members. The presence of shared living spaces, such as caves or temporary camps, would have provided opportunities for social interaction and bonding, helping to strengthen the social cohesion of the group. This may have been especially important for Homo erectus, who likely lived in small, closely-knit groups where cooperation was essential for survival. The use of fire in shelters, particularly in caves, may have further reinforced social bonds. Gathering around a fire would have provided warmth and light during the night, creating a natural focal point for social activities. The fire may have served as a place for sharing food, telling stories, and teaching younger members of the group important survival skills, such as toolmaking and hunting techniques. While we can only speculate about the social rituals of Homo erectus, the use of fire in communal shelters suggests that they had developed a level of social organization that went beyond mere survival. In addition to natural shelters and constructed huts, Homo erectus may have used other strategies to modify their environment and create more habitable spaces. For example, they may have dug shallow pits or trenches to create windbreaks or protect themselves from rain. These simple modifications would have helped them survive in open environments, where natural shelters were scarce. The ability to alter their surroundings in even minor ways reflects the growing complexity of Homo erectus' relationship with their environment. In conclusion, the habitation and shelter-building practices of Homo erectus reveal much about their adaptability and ingenuity. Whether taking refuge in caves, constructing simple shelters, or modifying their environment in other ways, Homo erectus demonstrated a remarkable ability to survive in diverse and often challenging environments. Their use of shelters not only provided physical protection but also played a role in their social lives, helping to foster cooperation and group cohesion. The next part will explore the cognitive abilities of Homo erectus, examining how their brain development and tool use reflect their growing intelligence and problem-solving skills. Part 10, Cognitive Abilities. The cognitive abilities of Homo erectus represent one of the most intriguing aspects of their evolution. As a species that emerged around 1.9 million years ago and lasted until approximately 110,000 years ago, Homo erectus displayed a range of behaviors that suggest significant advancements in intelligence, problem solving, and social interaction. While they did not possess the same level of cognitive complexity as modern humans, Homo erectus was far more advanced than their hominin predecessors, and their cognitive evolution laid the groundwork for later species, including Homo sapiens. One of the key indicators of Homo erectus cognitive abilities is their brain size. 
The average cranial capacity of Homo erectus ranged from 600 to 1,100 cubic centimeters, a substantial increase from the 500 to 700 cubic centimeters seen in earlier species like Homo habilis. This increase in brain size is often associated with more complex behaviors, including toolmaking, social organization, and perhaps even rudimentary communication. However, brain size alone does not tell the whole story, as the organization and functionality of different brain regions also play a critical role in cognitive development. The structure of the Homo erectus brain provides some clues about their cognitive abilities. Endocasts, which are natural or artificial casts of the interior of the skull, show that the frontal lobes of Homo erectus were more developed than those of earlier hominins. The frontal lobes are associated with higher cognitive functions such as problem-solving, planning, and decision-making, suggesting that Homo erectus was capable of more sophisticated thought processes than their predecessors. However, their frontal lobes were still less developed than those of modern humans, indicating that while Homo erectus had made significant strides in cognitive evolution, they had not yet reached the level of abstract thinking seen in Homo sapiens. One of the most important aspects of Homo erectus cognitive development was their ability to create and use tools. The Acheulean tool culture, associated with Homo erectus, represents a major leap forward in toolmaking technology. Acheulean tools, particularly the iconic hand axes, were far more advanced than the crude stone flakes used by earlier species. The production of these tools required a high degree of skill, foresight, and understanding of the properties of different materials. This suggests that Homo erectus had developed the ability to plan ahead, visualize the final product, and execute complex tasks, hallmarks of advanced cognitive abilities. The standardization of Acheulean tools across different regions also implies that Homo erectus engaged in some form of cultural transmission. The fact that similar tools were made in Africa, Europe, and Asia over a span of hundreds of thousands of years indicates that knowledge of toolmaking was passed down from one generation to the next. This ability to transmit knowledge is a key feature of human culture and suggests that Homo erectus had developed a rudimentary form of social learning. In addition to their toolmaking abilities, Homo erectus demonstrated other behaviors that suggest advanced cognitive skills. For example, the use of fire, discussed in earlier parts, required not only the physical ability to control and maintain a fire but also the cognitive understanding of its benefits and dangers. The ability to harness fire for cooking, warmth, and protection reflects a level of problem-solving and innovation that was previously unseen in earlier hominins. Fire also played a role in social organization, as it provided a communal space where individuals could gather and share resources, further reinforcing the cognitive and social complexities of Homo erectus. Homo erectus also showed signs of adaptability in their diet and subsistence strategies. Their ability to hunt and process large game, as well as forage for plant-based foods, suggests that they were capable of flexible and strategic thinking. Hunting, in particular, would have required the ability to track prey, coordinate with other members of the group, and use tools effectively, skills that indicate a higher level of cognitive functioning. The dietary flexibility of Homo erectus also highlights their ability to exploit a wide range of resources, which would have been essential for their survival in diverse environments. One of the most intriguing questions about Homo erectus cognitive abilities is whether they had the capacity for language or complex communication. While there is no direct evidence of language in Homo erectus, their brain development, tool use, and social behaviors suggest that they may have had some form of rudimentary communication. The development of Broca's area, a region of the brain associated with speech production, suggests that Homo erectus may have been capable of producing simple vocalizations or proto-language. This ability to communicate would have been crucial for coordinating group activities such as hunting and toolmaking, as well as for maintaining social bonds. In summary, the cognitive abilities of Homo erectus represent a significant advancement in human evolution. Their larger brain size, toolmaking skills, use of fire, and possible communication abilities all point to a species that was far more intelligent and capable than their predecessors. 
While they did not possess the full cognitive complexity of modern humans, Homo erectus laid the foundation for many of the behaviors and skills that would later define Homo sapiens. The next part will explore the geographic expansion of Homo erectus, examining how their adaptability and cognitive abilities allowed them to migrate out of Africa and colonize new regions across the Old World. Part 11, Geographic Expansion. Homo erectus stands out in the history of human evolution as the first hominin species to leave Africa and establish itself across vast regions of Europe and Asia. This geographic expansion, which occurred over hundreds of thousands of years, is a testament to the adaptability, resilience, and innovative capabilities of Homo erectus. Their migration out of Africa marked a significant milestone in human evolution, laying the groundwork for future species, including Homo sapiens, to colonize the globe. The migration of Homo erectus out of Africa is believed to have begun around 1.8 million years ago, based on fossil evidence from various sites across Eurasia. One of the earliest and most important discoveries that supports this migration is the site of Dmanisai in modern-day Georgia. The Dmanisai fossils, which date to approximately 1.8 million years ago, represent some of the oldest known remains of Homo erectus outside of Africa. These fossils show a mixture of primitive and advanced features, suggesting that Homo erectus was already in the process of evolving into a more robust and adaptable species by the time they reached this region. The Dmanisai fossils also provide clues about the environmental challenges faced by Homo erectus as they moved out of Africa. The region around Dmanisai would have been a mix of grasslands and forests, similar to the environments Homo erectus was familiar with in Africa. However, the cooler climate of the Caucasus region would have required them to adapt to new conditions, such as colder winters and different types of flora and fauna. The presence of stone tools at the Dmanisai site, including simple flakes and cutting tools, suggests that Homo erectus was able to modify their technology to suit their new environment, further demonstrating their adaptability. As Homo erectus continued to spread across Eurasia, they reached new regions, including Southeast Asia and Europe. One of the most significant discoveries of Homo erectus fossils in Asia is the site of Sangiran in Java, Indonesia. The fossils from this site, known as Java Man, date to between 1.5 and 1 million years ago and represent some of the earliest evidence of hominins in Southeast Asia. The presence of Homo erectus in Java raises intriguing questions about how they managed to migrate across such vast distances, possibly navigating through dense tropical forests and even crossing bodies of water. While it is unlikely that Homo erectus had boats or rafts, they may have taken advantage of natural land bridges that existed during periods of lower sea levels. The discovery of Homo erectus fossils in Europe provides further evidence of their wide geographic range. Fossils attributed to Homo erectus have been found at sites such as Ataperca in Spain and Maurer in Germany, dating to around 1 million years ago. These discoveries suggest that Homo erectus was able to adapt to the cooler climates of Europe, possibly through the use of fire, clothing made from animal skins, and more advanced shelter-building techniques. The ability to survive in such diverse environments, from the tropical regions of Southeast Asia to the temperate and cold climates of Europe, underscores the remarkable adaptability of Homo erectus. One of the key factors that allowed Homo erectus to expand their geographic range was their ability to exploit a wide variety of food resources. As discussed in previous parts, Homo erectus had a more diverse diet than earlier hominins, which included both plant and animal foods. This dietary flexibility allowed them to survive in different ecosystems, whether it was the grasslands of Africa, the forests of Europe, or the coastal regions of Southeast Asia. The use of Acheulean tools, such as hand axes, also played a crucial role in their survival, enabling them to process food more efficiently and hunt larger game. The geographic expansion of Homo erectus was not a single event but rather a gradual process that took place over hundreds of thousands of years. As environmental conditions changed and new opportunities for food and resources arose, groups of Homo erectus likely followed animal migrations and sought out new habitats. Their ability to migrate over such long distances raises questions about their cognitive abilities and social structures. 
While it is unlikely that Homo erectus had the complex social organization of modern humans, their migrations suggest that they were capable of coordinating group movements and adapting to new environments as a collective. Another important aspect of Homo erectus geographic expansion is the potential for interactions with other hominin species. As Homo erectus spread across different regions, they may have encountered other hominins, such as Homo habilis or Homo heidelbergensis. These interactions could have included competition for resources, as well as the potential for gene flow between populations. Fossil evidence from certain regions, such as the Levant, suggests that there may have been periods when multiple hominin species coexisted, leading to the possibility of interbreeding or cultural exchanges. The geographic range of Homo erectus also provides insights into their adaptability to different climates and environmental conditions. In Africa, Homo erectus thrived in open grasslands, where they likely engaged in hunting and scavenging large game. In contrast, the Homo erectus populations in Europe and Asia faced different challenges, such as colder climates and different types of prey. The ability to adapt to these new environments likely involved not only physical changes but also behavioral adaptations, such as the use of fire, improved shelter construction, and possibly even the development of early forms of clothing made from animal hides. One of the enduring questions surrounding the geographic expansion of Homo erectus is how they managed to survive in such diverse environments for such a long period of time. Homo erectus fossils have been found in regions as far apart as Spain and Indonesia, suggesting that they were able to thrive in environments ranging from tropical rainforests to temperate forests and grasslands. This adaptability may have been one of the key factors that allowed Homo erectus to persist for nearly 1.5 million years, making them one of the longest-lived hominin species in history. Another intriguing aspect of the geographic expansion of Homo erectus is the possibility that their migrations played a role in shaping the evolutionary history of other hominin species. As Homo erectus spread across different regions, they may have come into contact with other hominins, such as the Denisovans in Asia or Neanderthals in Europe. These interactions could have led to gene flow between populations, contributing to the genetic diversity of later hominin species, including Homo sapiens. In conclusion, the geographic expansion of Homo erectus is one of the most remarkable chapters in the story of human evolution. Their ability to migrate out of Africa and establish themselves in diverse regions across Europe and Asia highlights their adaptability, resilience, and innovative capabilities. The discoveries of Homo erectus fossils in sites such as Dmanisai, Java, and Attapurka provide valuable insights into their migration patterns and how they managed to survive in such a wide range of environments. The next part will explore the cultural evolution of Homo erectus, focusing on their technological innovations, social behaviors, and the potential for early forms of symbolic behavior. Part 12 Cultural Evolution The cultural evolution of Homo erectus, while not as advanced as that of later hominin species, represents a significant step forward in the development of human-like behaviors. Their technological innovations, social organization, and potential for early symbolic behavior suggest that Homo erectus was not only a physically adaptable species but also a culturally innovative one. While the archaeological record provides limited evidence of the more complex cultural practices seen in Homo sapiens, there are several key aspects of Homo erectus behavior that point to their evolving cultural capacities. One of the most important aspects of Homo erectus cultural evolution is their technological advancements, particularly in the realm of toolmaking. As discussed in previous parts, Homo erectus is most closely associated with the Acheulean tool culture, which was characterized by the production of bifacial hand axes, cleavers, and other stone tools. The Acheulean tools represent a significant improvement over the earlier Olduin tools used by Homo habilis, as they were more standardized, versatile, and effective for a variety of tasks, including cutting, chopping, and butchering. The production of these tools required skill, planning, and knowledge of stone flaking techniques, all of which suggest that Homo erectus had developed a level of cognitive and motor skills that surpassed those of their predecessors. The Acheulean tool culture also provides evidence of cultural transmission within Homo erectus groups. 
The widespread distribution of Acheulean tools across Africa, Europe, and Asia suggests that the knowledge of toolmaking was passed down from generation to generation, indicating a form of cultural continuity. This ability to transmit knowledge is a hallmark of human culture and suggests that Homo erectus had developed social structures that allowed for the sharing and teaching of skills. The standardization of tools across different regions also implies that Homo erectus may have had some form of communication, whether through gestures, vocalizations, or proto-language, to convey the techniques of toolmaking. In addition to their technological innovations, Homo erectus may have exhibited other forms of cultural behavior, such as the use of fire, shelter construction, and possibly even early forms of art or symbolic behavior. While there is no direct evidence of symbolic behavior in Homo erectus, some researchers have suggested that their use of fire and the deliberate construction of shelters could be seen as early expressions of culture. Fire, in particular, would have played a central role in their daily lives, providing not only warmth and protection but also a communal space where social activities could take place. The hearth, as a central gathering point, may have fostered social cohesion and cooperation, helping to reinforce group bonds and establish social hierarchies. The potential for symbolic behavior in Homo erectus is a topic of ongoing debate among archaeologists and anthropologists. While there is no definitive evidence of symbolic artifacts, such as cave paintings or carved figurines, some researchers have pointed to certain patterns in the archaeological record that suggest the possibility of early symbolic thought. For example, the use of symmetrical and carefully crafted Acheulean hand axes may indicate an appreciation for form and aesthetics, which could be an early precursor to symbolic art. Similarly, the construction of shelters and the deliberate use of fire may reflect a growing understanding of the environment and an ability to manipulate it in ways that go beyond mere survival. The social organization of Homo erectus also played a key role in their cultural evolution. While their social structures were likely simpler than those of later hominins, there is evidence to suggest that Homo erectus lived in small groups, possibly organized around family units or extended kin networks. These groups would have cooperated in hunting, gathering, and other survival tasks, and their ability to work together likely contributed to their success as a species. The sharing of resources, such as food and tools, would have been essential for maintaining social bonds and ensuring the survival of the group. The possibility of cultural evolution in Homo erectus also raises questions about their cognitive abilities and the potential for early forms of abstract thought. The production of standardized tools, the use of fire, and the construction of shelters all suggest that Homo erectus had developed a level of cognitive complexity that allowed them to plan, problem-solve, and adapt to new challenges. While they did not possess the full range of cultural behaviors seen in Homo sapiens, their innovations in technology and social organization represent important steps toward the development of more complex human-like cultures. In summary, the cultural evolution of Homo erectus represents a critical stage in the development of human behavior. Their technological advancements, social organization, and potential for early symbolic thought suggest that Homo erectus was not only a physically adaptable species but also a culturally innovative one. While their culture was simpler than that of later hominins, Homo erectus laid the foundation for many of the behaviors and skills that would later define Homo sapiens. The next part will explore the decline of Homo erectus, examining the factors that contributed to their eventual disappearance and how their legacy influenced the evolution of later hominin species. Part 13. The Decline of Homo erectus. Homo erectus is one of the longest-lived hominin species, surviving for nearly 1.5 million years. However, like all species, they eventually faced decline and extinction, leaving behind a legacy that profoundly shaped the evolution of later hominins, including Homo sapiens. The factors contributing to the decline of Homo erectus are complex and multifaceted, encompassing environmental changes, competition with other hominin species, and possibly even limitations in their cognitive and technological advancements. One of the primary factors in the decline of Homo erectus was climate change. During their time, the Earth experienced a series of glacial and interglacial periods, which dramatically altered the environments in which Homo erectus lived. 
These climate fluctuations resulted in changing ecosystems, shifting from savannas to forests, or from lush, resource-rich areas to more arid and barren landscapes. While Homo erectus was highly adaptable and capable of surviving in diverse environments, these rapid and extreme climatic changes would have posed significant challenges to their survival. For instance, the cooling periods associated with glaciations may have made it more difficult for Homo erectus to find food and suitable habitats. In colder regions, Homo erectus would have needed to adapt by finding ways to keep warm, such as using fire and possibly even making primitive clothing from animal hides. While there is some evidence that they were capable of using fire, it is unclear whether their technological and cultural adaptations were sufficient to cope with the colder climates over the long term. In contrast, during warmer interglacial periods, they may have had to deal with competition for resources as new species of animals and plants colonized previously uninhabitable areas. Another significant factor in the decline of Homo erectus was competition with other hominin species. By the time Homo erectus began to decline, other hominins, such as Homo heidelbergensis and later Homo sapiens, were emerging. These species may have been better equipped to deal with the changing environments or had developed more advanced technologies and social structures that gave them a competitive edge. For example, Homo heidelbergensis, which is often considered a common ancestor of both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, exhibited more advanced hunting techniques and possibly even more complex social behaviors than Homo erectus. The emergence of these more advanced hominins likely placed pressure on Homo erectus populations, especially in regions where their territories overlapped. Competition for resources, such as food and shelter, would have been particularly intense in regions where multiple hominin species coexisted. In some areas, Homo erectus may have been able to coexist with other hominins for a time, but in the long run, the competition may have led to the decline of Homo erectus populations. The emergence of more technologically advanced hominins, with more efficient hunting tools and better social organization, could have further exacerbated this competition, making it increasingly difficult for Homo erectus to thrive. In addition to environmental and competitive pressures, limitations in the cognitive and technological advancements of Homo erectus may have played a role in their decline. While Homo erectus was highly innovative for their time, particularly in the development of Acheulean tools and the use of fire, they did not exhibit the same level of technological and cultural complexity as later hominins. For example, while Homo erectus was able to produce a wide variety of stone tools, their toolmaking techniques remained relatively static over hundreds of thousands of years. In contrast, later hominins, such as Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, developed more specialized and sophisticated tools that allowed them to exploit a wider range of resources and adapt more effectively to changing environments. Similarly, while Homo erectus may have had some form of rudimentary communication, there is little evidence to suggest that they developed the complex language and symbolic behavior seen in Homo sapiens. Language and symbolic thinking are thought to be key factors in the success of modern humans, as they allow for more efficient communication, social cooperation, and the transmission of knowledge across generations. The lack of these cognitive capabilities in Homo erectus may have limited their ability to adapt to new challenges and environments as effectively as later hominins. Another important factor in the decline of Homo erectus is their relatively slow rate of cultural and technological change. As mentioned earlier, the Acheulean tool culture associated with Homo erectus persisted for hundreds of thousands of years with little variation or innovation. This contrasts sharply with the rapid technological advancements seen in later hominin species, such as Homo sapiens, who developed more diverse and specialized tools, as well as complex symbolic and artistic expressions. The slower pace of innovation in Homo erectus may have hindered their ability to keep up with changing environmental conditions and competition from other hominins. Despite these challenges, Homo erectus did not disappear suddenly. Their extinction was a gradual process that likely occurred over tens of thousands of years, as their populations dwindled and were eventually replaced by other hominins. In some regions, such as Southeast Asia, Homo erectus may have survived longer than in other parts of the world. For example, 
Fossils of Homo erectus from Java suggest that they may have persisted in the region until as recently as 110,000 years ago, long after Homo sapiens had emerged in Africa. This suggests that Homo erectus was able to survive in isolated pockets for a considerable period, even as other hominins became dominant in different parts of the world. The eventual extinction of Homo erectus was likely the result of a combination of factors, including climate change, competition with other hominins, and limitations in their cognitive and technological capabilities. However, their legacy endures in the evolutionary history of humans. Homo erectus was a pioneering species that left Africa, spread across the globe, and developed key innovations, such as the use of tools and fire, that would later be built upon by other hominins. Their ability to adapt to diverse environments and survive for nearly 1.5 million years is a testament to their resilience and ingenuity. In conclusion, the decline of Homo erectus was a complex and gradual process shaped by a variety of environmental, competitive, and cognitive factors. While they eventually gave way to more advanced hominin species, their legacy as one of the most successful and enduring human ancestors remains. The next part will focus on the legacy of Homo erectus, examining how their innovations and adaptations influenced the evolution of later hominin species, including Homo sapiens, and what lessons their story can teach us about human evolution. Part 14, Legacy of Homo erectus. Homo erectus holds a unique place in the evolutionary history of humans. As the first hominin species to leave Africa and spread across the Old World, Homo erectus set the stage for the global migration and adaptation of later human species. Their technological innovations, cognitive advancements, and adaptability allowed them to survive in diverse environments for nearly 1.5 million years, making them one of the most successful hominin species in history. The legacy of Homo erectus can be seen in many of the traits and behaviors that later hominins, including Homo sapiens, inherited and refined. One of the most enduring aspects of Homo erectus legacy is their technological innovations, particularly in toolmaking. The Acheulean tools associated with Homo erectus represent a significant leap forward in human technology. These bifacial hand axes and other stone tools were more advanced and versatile than the earlier Olduin tools used by Homo habilis, allowing Homo erectus to process food more efficiently, hunt more effectively, and adapt to a wider range of environments. The Acheulean tool culture persisted for hundreds of thousands of years and spread across Africa, Europe, and Asia, influencing the toolmaking traditions of later hominins. The development of the Acheulean hand axe, in particular, represents a key moment in the evolution of human technology. These tools were not only practical but also required a level of skill and foresight to produce, indicating that Homo erectus had developed the cognitive abilities necessary for planning and problem solving. The standardization of Acheulean tools across different regions also suggests that Homo erectus was capable of transmitting knowledge and skills across generations, a hallmark of cultural evolution. This ability to innovate and pass on technological knowledge is a trait that later hominins, including Homo sapiens, would build upon. In addition to their technological innovations, Homo erectus also made important strides in the use of fire. The control of fire was a revolutionary development in human evolution, providing warmth, protection, and a new way to process food. Cooking food not only made it easier to digest but also increased its nutritional value, contributing to the growth of the brain and the development of more complex behaviors. While the exact timeline of Homo erectus mastery of fire is still debated, there is evidence from sites such as Wonderwork Cave in South Africa that Homo erectus may have been using fire as early as one million years ago. The use of fire had far-reaching implications for the social and cultural evolution of Homo erectus. Fire provided a central gathering point where individuals could come together to share food, collaborate on tasks, and possibly even engage in early forms of communication. The ability to harness fire also allowed Homo erectus to expand into colder regions, such as Europe and parts of Asia, where they would have needed warmth and protection to survive. The mastery of fire was a key innovation that later hominins, including Homo sapiens, would further refine and rely on for their survival. 
Another important aspect of Homo erectus legacy is their adaptability. As the first hominin species to leave Africa, Homo erectus demonstrated an unparalleled ability to adapt to new and diverse environments. From the grasslands of Africa to the forests of Asia and the colder climates of Europe, Homo erectus was able to survive and thrive in a wide range of ecosystems. This adaptability was made possible by their physical endurance, cognitive abilities, and technological innovations, all of which allowed them to exploit a variety of food resources and respond to environmental challenges. The geographic expansion of Homo erectus also had a profound impact on the evolutionary history of later hominins. As they spread across the Old World, Homo erectus may have interacted with other hominin species, such as Homo heidelbergensis, Neanderthals, and Denisovans, leading to potential gene flow and cultural exchanges. These interactions could have influenced the development of later hominins, including Homo sapiens, by introducing new genetic traits or technological innovations. Homo erectus' long-lasting presence in the fossil record also provides valuable insights into the process of human evolution. The fact that Homo erectus survived for nearly 1.5 million years, despite facing numerous environmental challenges and competition from other hominins, highlights the resilience and adaptability of the species. Their ability to endure for such a long period of time, while maintaining a relatively stable tool culture and social structure, underscores the importance of flexibility and innovation in human evolution. The story of Homo erectus also offers important lessons for understanding the broader narrative of human evolution. Their success as a species was not solely based on their physical adaptations but also on their ability to innovate, cooperate, and adapt to changing environments. These traits are central to the survival of all hominins, including modern humans. The ability to adapt to new challenges, whether through technological innovation or social cooperation, is a key theme in the story of human evolution, and it is one that Homo erectus exemplified. In conclusion, the legacy of Homo erectus is one of innovation, adaptability, and endurance. Their technological advancements, use of fire, and ability to survive in diverse environments set the stage for the evolution of later hominins, including Homo sapiens. While Homo erectus eventually gave way to more advanced species, their contributions to the evolutionary history of humans are undeniable. The final part will provide a conclusion to the story of Homo erectus, synthesizing their achievements and reflecting on their place in the broader narrative of human evolution. Part 15, Conclusion, Homo erectus in the evolutionary story. The story of Homo erectus is one of the most important chapters in the history of human evolution. As the first hominin species to leave Africa and spread across the Old World, Homo erectus paved the way for the global migration and adaptation of later human species, including Homo sapiens. Their technological innovations, use of fire, and ability to survive in diverse environments are key milestones in the development of human behavior and culture. Homo erectus represents a critical point in the evolutionary timeline, marking the transition from more primitive hominins to those capable of more advanced cognitive and social behaviors. While they did not possess the full range of cultural and technological complexity seen in later species, their innovations in toolmaking, fire use, and social organization laid the foundation for the development of more complex human cultures. The endurance of Homo erectus, both in terms of their physical adaptability and their cultural stability, is a testament to their success as a species. Surviving for nearly 1.5 million years, Homo erectus adapted to a wide range of environments, from the grasslands of Africa to the forests of Asia and the colder climates of Europe. Their ability to survive in such diverse ecosystems, coupled with their technological innovations, highlights the importance of flexibility and innovation in human evolution. While Homo erectus eventually gave way to more advanced hominins, their legacy continues to shape our understanding of human evolution. Their story provides valuable insights into the processes that drove the development of early human behavior, culture, and cognition. In many ways, Homo erectus represents the bridge between the more primitive hominins of the past and the more advanced species that would follow, including Homo sapiens. 
In reflecting on the legacy of Homo erectus, we can see the enduring importance of adaptability, innovation, and cooperation in the survival of our species. Homo erectus was a pioneer in many ways, and their contributions to the evolutionary story of humans cannot be overstated. Their journey, from the grasslands of Africa to the far reaches of Europe and Asia, is a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of the human species, a legacy that continues to inspire our understanding of what it means to be human.